Yeah, so we spoke the other day about the wheel bearings getting hot. When you're up to highway speed, pull up and just feel your axles like so. And this one was getting very hot. You can see all the grease that's been spitting out. Yeah, it's not cool. It's time to do something about it or you'll be stuck on the side of the highway with a collapsed bearing or even a, a blown tire, which can catch fire and cause major issues on the side of the road. So wheels are coming off and the wheel bearings are getting uh, repacked with new grease. So to get your wheels off, you need to make sure that your handbrake's undone. The first thing you need to do before you undo that is make sure all your legs are down, all four legs are down, and it's not on too much of a hill or anything like that, and chock whichever wheel is still on the ground, and then uh, undo your handbrake. Just lift that pin out of the way and shut it down. Now the wheels, the wheel that I'm gonna take off in a minute, the drum, the brake part will be loose and the brake drum, once I've undone the main nut on the bearings, will slide off. We'll get the bearings out, we'll repack them with new grease. Uh, they say to repack your wheel bearings every 10 to 15,000 Ks on a caravan, which I think is a bit of an overkill, but it's better to be safe than sorry, especially if your wheel bearings have done a fair few kilometres. Um, and plus up north in the heat, it certainly makes a difference. You just want to make sure that you've got good secure coverage here under the main axle so that it's nice and flat. Same down here, nice and flat with a couple of bits of wood so it doesn't bury into the dirt. And uh, just be careful winding it up, get the wheel off the ground, just make sure it's all steady and stable and uh, safe. Once you've jacked it up a little bit, the wheel should move like so and pull that chock out and uh, go and get the job done. So you're gonna need moldy grips and a couple of screwdrivers. You could probably get away with just a little stumpy screwdriver, but I brought the other one in just for reinforcement. Uh, and a pair of side cutters. And that's all you need to do this whole job. And some, uh, some trusty race gloves, <laughs> surgical gloves, just to keep your hands clean. That's all that is. So you can rip them off if you need to go and do something else or use the phone or whatever. Yeah. And of course the hammer, I forgot to mention. So just tap that, it's just a dust cover, it holds the grease in. And just tap that one off. And then behind there, actually I haven't put my gloves on yet. I'll put my gloves on. If you can see the grease there, there's a split pin in behind that grease. Pull him out. Undo the main nut. It's nice to have a rag sitting there somewhere so you don't get grease on everything. Just give the drum a little tap. Pull your first bearing out. You can see on the bearing there, that heat mark, you can clearly, and I can smell it. It's been very, very, very hot. So, drum off. And uh, yeah, I've just found another problem. You can see here, it's been that hot. The brake shoes are all cracked. When you put your foot on the brake, the electric brakes, that's your big magnet in there. The magnet which hits on the inside of the drum in there. And that's all she wrote. That's how the brakes work. But uh, 
Yeah, I should really re be replacing these shoes, but um, you know they've got quite a bit of mileage left in them. Same as the bearings, they they, they are showing some serious wear, but uh, with new grease they're going to be fine. They're not going to cause a problem. But uh, it's good that you can get these wheels off and just check all this stuff if you can do it yourself because uh, those that don't tend to just keep going until something major goes wrong. Yeah, so to get that uh, bearing out of the center hub of this of the drum, the inner bearing, you gotta come from the other side and tap on the bearing and it knocks the seal out and then we can get all the old grease out, put all new grease in, repack the bearings and uh, put it back together, give the brakes an adjust up and reverse the process and then do the other side. Yeah, see, you just get both your bearings, wipe off as much grease as you can. And when you pack them with new grease, um, you lay a heap of grease in your hand and you pack it through, the old grease comes out when you, the new grease pushes it out. And you just want to uh, make sure that you get all that grease out of there and into a rag because that grease has actually been melted and it doesn't do the job that it's meant to do anymore so it's time for the new grease to go in and this is the stuff that i've chosen this is from super cheap auto it's suitable for anything automotive including caravan so it's a very high temperature grease and uh, I'll just clean this up and we'll come back. You can see there how black and dirty and almost runny that grease is. It's, uh, it's rubbish. The caravan fellas recommend that every 10, around every 10,000, 15 at the outside, uh, change your bearing grease in your caravan. And uh, you can see why, especially up in the heat, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, but um, yeah, it's, 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 it can turn into disaster real quick on one of your holidays. Yeah, so the grease, when I put it in before we left on it for our holiday 108 days ago, that's, uh, we've done 17,000 Ks in that time. And you can see that it is overdue. It, that grease was bright red when I put it in and now it's black and putrid. So you got to, it's very important that you clean the shaft here especially back there where the seal runs because if it's dirty and you put the whole drum arrangement back on and the seal's got dirt under it when it gets hot the grease is going to flick out and it gets on your on your brake shoes and on your drum and uh yeah your brakes your brakes just won't work properly at all if they've got grease on them so the cleanliness process in this little operation is or anything mechanically for that matter the cleanliness is imperative it's a must <clears throat> so that's the seal that uh, not only holds that inner bearing in when you're putting it back together but uh, stops the grease from coming out of that little hub chamber and getting on your um, onto your brakes now inside that seal is a, a spring and what happens is that spring sits inside it In, you can see it there it goes inside now what some people don't know is the springs to hold that spring together they've got a little area where it's like a nut like a bolt and a thread you the camera may not pick it up there but you can screw it undo it and they and it comes apart so what I'm trying to say there is, because the, the seal's done such a long amount of kilometres, you've got to be very careful that you don't nip off the smaller end, because that's the end that acts like the bolt that goes up inside the spring this end. So I just snip off um, three or four little segments, and then, then I screw it back in. And what it does, it makes the diameter of the spring that little bit smaller, I'll just see if I can get that back in there. Yep, good and done. So now, the, the piece of the seal that runs on the hub here, because it's got a bit of age about it, is gonna be that fractions tighter, and I know it's gonna be good 
for its next, you know, 10, 15,000 Ks or whatever I choose, to, whenever I choose to do it, uh, it's not gonna leak, but there's the grease. That's the color it should be. So it's a good indication if you've got a trailer, rip the wheels off and have a look at the color of the grease. If it's pitch black and uh, dirty, change it. This is the procedure, it's very easy. Just make sure the jack and everything's done the right way and safely. If you haven't got the stands like I have with the caravan, um, put some big blocks of wood under it or uh, some axle stands. Someone that you know will have axle stands and uh, you can actually wind the jack back down onto those stands once it's under the chassis and it's safe. So yeah, that's the process with the seal. So now I'll just sit that seal, the, the one that I've just adjusted, back into that inner rubber section. And now the inside diameter of that seal that's gonna run on there is just that whisker tighter and uh, no trouble whatsoever. And that feels brilliant. You can't make them too tight because then they run hot and then it melts that rubber in there and you've gone backwards. So it's very important. You only just nip a couple of little uh, winds off that spring if you do this process. And then it's up to packing the grease time. So you'll see the old grease come out as I do this. So just move a little bit up onto the palm of my hand and we just rub it across the back of that bearing. And you can see the old grease coming out there on one side of the bearing. And once I know I've got it, you can see it even better there. Once I know I've got fresh grease all the way around, I just wipe that old stuff off and uh, we're good to go with our new grease inside the bearing where it needs to be. See it all coming out there, all that dark, yucky stuff. All the new stuff's in there. We'll give that a bit of a wipe up. We fill the hub up, the hub of the drum here. We fill that up full of grease. A tiny bit on here, a little, a tiny little bit where that seal runs, just for lubricant. Uh, so it's not uh, rubber on steel, it's rubber with a bit of grease in it just a fraction and um, yeah, I'll do the other the other bearing now and we'll start putting it back together. So just lay a good serve of grease back in the hub. And leave it nice and hollow in the middle so the shaft can go straight through. That shaft, I'm just putting a bit of grease on there so the bearings just slide back on nicely um, with no, no friction and nothing, nothing gets caught. So there's plenty of grease in there now. I'll just put a fraction more in there to make sure. And whatever's not meant to be in there will squirt out at the end. You'll see that in just a minute. So you just grab your seal, bearings in, new grease is in. You sit the new seal in. Give it a tap down so that it's flush with the top of the drum and uh, job's right. You can hear the noise change when it's all the way home. When it's hitting that steel noise, you know it's exactly where it needs to be. So it's time to flip it over, put it on, Clean my hands, get it all back together, put the outer outer uh, bearing in, and away we go. One of the other things you can do while you've got this apart, because as the brakes wear, they create a lot of dust. So the ideal way, if you've got time and you're not gonna make a mess, is to wash it out with some hot water, because you don't wanna breathe that dust in. It's definitely no good for you. It's brake dust and brakes are made out of material that are definitely no good for your lungs. So you can wipe the dust out, wipe it off as best you can and that's probably good enough. But to get it perfect, hot water or even an old paint brush and just brush it all off and don't breathe any of that stuff in. So the bearing's all clean, good to go. 
There's no grease or anything on the drum. <coughs> that all sounds good. So you can see the excess grease coming out there. So I'll wipe a bit of that out once I've repacked the second bearing and we'll put this process back together. Yes, I'll see there's a couple of different uh, mobile caravan mechanics that come around. I've seen them in the caravan parks. But what they're doing is exactly what I'm doing. They're charging a few hundred dollars for it. Whereas this cost me $21 for the grease down at good old super cheap auto there's nothing those guys haven't got they're brilliant people that work there are extremely knowledgeable as well um yeah so i'll repack this bearing and uh get it all back together but all the all the mechanics are doing is re-greasing this it gives you a good insurance and uh that you're gonna make it to your next destination but if you're gonna do a trip around australia and go off the beaten track a bit etc uh, the chances of you making it all the way around without collapsing your bearings, it's like a Russian roulette. You need to do this process. It's a lot cheaper if you can do it yourself. It's a bit hot up north, but you know, you gotta do it. Today's not too bad. It's uh, 33 degrees almost every day of the year in Darwin, but the humidity changes in, a, in around September, late September for a few months, and the humidity goes to 100%. You just sweat, you sweat, 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 day and night but uh, yeah it's a handy little trick to know yourself because for the sake of 20 bucks and maybe an hour uh, it's done and I've saved a few hundred bucks so that's a really good shot that the new grease has come through the old grease is out I'll wipe that off in a minute we know the new grease is in the bearing and we cover it all in with new grease and uh, you know the grease will keep the steel on steel from rubbing together as we go down the road and uh, it's normal for the bearings and the drums the brakes and everything to get hot but you should be able to hold your hand on it like hot's one thing steam and hot you can hear them crackle when there's something wrong um, but yeah if, uh, if you can hold your hand on it and it's not burning, they're fine. Especially if you're up north and the roads are hot and you're doing 100 odd kilometres an hour, they're fine. But when they're really hot and it's stinging the back of your hand because it's so hot, it's time to change your grease or get, get someone that knows what they're doing to have a look at it before you are stuck on the side of the road in huge temperatures not knowing what to do. So I've just wiped all that big chunk of grease out. So in other words, there's just the right amount in there. There's uh, the new one that's all been packed. I'll just make it sit in there nicely. Take the excess out. We'll make that look a bit nicer in a minute. We we'll put our big end washer on. That just sits there nicely. Yeah, so the old nut, that's that's it. There's no rocket science there. You just wind that on. You can see there's the hole there in the middle for the split pin. Now, the, the process I'm going to do next is very, very important when you put these things back together. So, good old multi grips. You do it up firm. And make sure it's all spinning nice. And then you back it off. You back it off so there's no pressure on the bearings. They can just run freely. And the drum should continue to spin by itself just like that. It slows down a bit at the end because it's full of new grease, but uh, that's what you, how you want it. So you do it up firm and then back it off to the nearest hole for the split pin to go in. Just push him all the way home. Grab your side cutters. Bring that around. There ain't no way known that can come off. 
And I'm just gonna take all that old grease out of there, put some new grease in there. It's only a dust cover. It stops it getting dirty. It doesn't, that's all it does is a dust cover and it looks, pre <clears throat> looks pretty from the outside, but that uh, stops dirt and you know, road grime and all that stuff getting in there. So it's just a nice little cover, but we'll clean that up before we put it back on. Give them a nice clean, nice fresh grease in the dust cover. Some guys don't even put grease in there, but I do. It's a little bit of extra grease. If the process does happen where the bearings are going to get that hot and wear out and the grease hasn't been changed, it'll all melt. This might give you an extra day or two behind the wheel, just that little bit of extra grease when it all melts and links together. But uh, yeah, I put it in there just so that it's all fully covered in grease. That's about all she wrote there. That's done. Just a nice clean rag. Finish that off. You can see here there's a tiny little bit of grease on each bit of thread. That's fine. That's a good idea. It helps the wheel nuts go on nice and easy. And it helps for them to undo next time you need to take the wheel off. So just a tiny bit of grease on there and uh, wheel back on, wheel nuts back on, and the dirty grease that's sitting around that wheel. Um, next time the old girl goes out on the road, we will go through a car wash and clean it all off. And then one of the things when you pull up, when cruising down the highway, you're checking your wheels and you see that grease mark again in 10 to 15,000 Ks you know it's time to change your grease. So there's your little process on how to look after your bearings and not get stuck on the side of the road. Cheers. Actually now, I think Margaret's pretty keen. We're gonna go and have a look at uh, what the cyclone done to Darwin in 1974. It just destroyed the whole town. Uh, we're gonna go and have a look at that. There's a full museum here on it. So stick around, you'll see that in just a minute. forget once you've done your wheel nuts up and you've finished the job I'm going to show you how to adjust the brakes in just a minute once that's done when the wheels back on the ground it's imperative that you recheck your wheel nuts when the weight of the caravans back on the ground uh, so the wheel doesn't move and you can put some pressure on it and you can appreciate just how tight the wheel nuts are then give it another 500 to a thousand k's down the track and check them again. Make sure they haven't come loose. We'll adjust the brakes in just a minute and then we're off to see what happened with Cyclone Tracy. Time for some new gloves. The old gloves are, uh, you know, I don't like putting greasy marks on everything. I've got to clean the tools and put them away and um, adjust the brakes. And I wanted to talk about the tires and stuff like that, but it's time for new gloves for now. Perfect. So to adjust your brakes, you just got to flick that little dust cover off out of there. There's a wheel inside. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's a little wheel in there that you got to uh, just wind up. And if you don't get it right, it, it either means that your brakes are not going to work or, or it means you're going to get the brakes too tight and it'll cook your it'll cook the brakes and uh, make everything hot your brakes your your grease you've just put in there it makes everything too hot so basically you put the screwdriver in and flick the wheel up in and up until you can hear the brake shoes just touching where they're meant to. Now we've done 17,000 Ks 
and uh, the brake adjustment on this only needs a tickle up. So we'll get that done. So now the adjustment's done and I'm thinking you should be able to hear the brake shoes rubbing on the drums as I spin it and you don't want it any tighter than this being a caravan. That slight rub mark that you can hear is all you want. Put your dust cover back in there. It just sits in there, keeps a bit of dust and road, you know, the little rocks that bounce up underneath your vehicle, keeps the crap out of there. But uh, these tyres that I've got, they're a, they're a light truck tyre. I got them from uh, Norlane Tyre Service there in Geelong, in Victoria. And uh, Adrian, that owns the place, has been a gentleman his whole life. He's really, really good to talk to and deal with. And Zeth, his son, his whole family works there. And um, my mate Johnny, g'day Johnny if you're watching this. But yeah, light truck tyres for a caravan. Uh, brilliant now this has done a few thousand k's before we left geelong and 17,000 k's on the on the rough bitumen roads the corrugated roads the uh some of the real shitty rocky dirt roads and have a look at the tire wear tire wear was is perfect i said to these blokes when i first bought the caravan oh, i'm going to take it around australia i want the right tires on it blah 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 and yeah they've done me a good deal i'm very very happy so if you're in geelong or in victoria geelong whatever you need tires whatever go and see adrian at the team at dunlop there in norlane um johnny or zeth or anyone there is very very helpful and uh they'll give you exactly what you need without charging too much <clears throat> they're the blokes to see in geelong for tires cheers Time to let her down and check them wheel nuts. One thing I haven't put on our YouTube movies just yet oh, shit. is uh, one of my uh, favourite horse whipping cracks. Man, do these things go off. They're a lot of fun and they make your shoulders very, very strong. that doesn't make your shoulders strong if you do that twice a week your shoulders will stay strong as forever if you ever wondering what that noise is at the end the whip it's the little tail on the end that breaks the sound barrier that gives you that supersonic crack of the sound waves once you go over it depends on the density of the oxygen but if the oxygen's you know on a hot day like today <clears throat> with uh, a dry heat, which means the oxygen's pretty thin. That's breaking the sound barrier at about 830 kilometers an hour. That's what the supersonic crack is when it breaks the sound barrier. So if it's a really uh, cold day, the oxygen's thicker. Obviously if it's you know been raining, whatever, it's thicker again, but and sometimes it can take the speed of you know up to 870 kilometers an hour with that tail to break that sonic to make that sonic sound of breaking the sound barrier but these horse, horse whips are a lot of fun i've been hit in the face probably over 150 times since i've brought it and uh it's a little bit of fun learning how to do it but uh it's painful when it doesn't work but yeah that's just a little insight on the sound barrier and uh the horse whips and what it is that's actually making the noise <laughs> 